they say university makes students here students make university so with the slogan of think big i himanshu kaushik your host of the day would like to welcome you all in today's session slash webinar on exploring the dynamics of automobile engineering your pathway for automotive excellence and i hope that you all are doing great sound happy and healthy at wherever you're taking this session from so before we move on and learn what are the opportunities um, that are there and what can what are those pathways we can follow while studying automobile engineering specifically we joined by uh, our expert here so i shall introduce you to our expert please welcome mr sumit kanjan who is an assistant professor in lovely professional university and he has a passion of a uh, motorsports engineering and a background in mechanical and automobile engineering he brings a wealth of industry experience having worked as design engineer at ittr jamshedpur and contributed to engine testing at the prestigious indian oil corporations research and development center with a history of competition in sae india events and representing his institution at formula sae australia he combines practical expertise with theoretical knowledge and he is a dedicated researcher sumit sir has already published 17 research papers and holds four patents in the field including innovations developed during his time at indian oil and beyond academics he finds inspiration in travel fostering creativity and problem solving skills so today he will be guiding us um, through the session and he will be actually telling us what are those pathways we can have uh you know to enhance our automotive uh, excellence and with this sir i welcome you in the session here and now i request you to please take over the screen uh sir you're not audible am i audible and please you're audible sir you're audible thank you so much ma'am for your uh, for the kind introduction uh so i welcome all the uh, future automotive engineers uh, in this session this session uh, is organized uh, to make you uh, aware about the various dynamics of the automobile engineering as you guys would be aware that uh, automobile engineering uh, is continuously transforming at a very high pace so uh you see the finalizing the pathways uh, uh to get uh, into intricacies of the automotive engineering and how to excel into automotive uh, engineering department uh, this session is been aligned with so again i welcome uh, all the uh, future automotive engineers in this session uh, uh, this session will take you uh, on a journey of the different innovation that uh, happens over the time in the field of uh, automobile engineering and uh, will make you propel into the exciting world of automotives so uh, today uh, yes. in this session we will embark on a voyage that will unveil the intricate pathways that lead to designing creating and revolutionizing vehicles that shape our world so a famous quote is there that every car you see on road started as an idea a concept and a passion so the this quote highlights that even a small uh, car started with a student like you it started with an idea that idea was transformed into a concept and then to transform a concept into a running vehicle on road requires a lot of passion so that is why for when it comes to automobile engineering people use the term automotive enthusiast so it's a passionate uh, trade which uh, we can uh, one, one can go with so this is the very first image uh, over here which uh, shows you uh, about the very first vehicle which was been uh, invented back in 1885 and uh, it was this week on combustion engine so we started the automotive journey from this vehicle and in today's time we have completely revolutionized, revolutionized this vehicle into a modern vehicle somewhat like this the black image the second image which you are seeing over here uh, uses the bioplastics where the body panels uh, of this vehicle are used from base materials so as you can see over here that automobile engineering has seen a revolutionizing change in the past so 
let us take a guess that how much time it took for this transformation. Any guesses, please? That how much time it took for this transformation to take place uh, from the first internal combustion engine vehicle invented in 1885 up to this year, 2023. So it's 137 years of long history. So please realize that the automobile engineering from what was introduced back in 1885 into the current century, it takes around 137 years. Now, in these 137 years, please realize what all has happened. So we started with a single cylinder internal combustion engine, which was upgraded to a multi-cylinder uh, internal combustion engine based vehicle. And then the concept of uh, the fast production lines by Ford model T was introduced for the very first time where people started realizing that the vehicle can be used for the conveyance purpose. Earlier before, people were not realizing that vehicles can be used for, for conveyance. People happened to consider these uh, vehicles to be an amusement purposes. Slowly and gradually, automotive industry, they, can, they changed this uh, perception from amusement to uh, personal conveyance and the story started. So Ford Model T, the third image which you're seeing was, uh, you see, uh, uh, underlining path where people can own the vehicle privately at a lower cost of around merely $550. And then uh, you see the World War One and during World War Two, the different dimensions of the automobile engineering started evolving. So what, you, what you're seeing over here in the fourth image is a two wheelers and the tag which started being manufactured using the concept of the automobile engineering. And then uh, people started realizing that it's a high time as the World War II got over, World War I gets over, so people started realizing that aerodynamics has a pathway. So different, different designs of automobiles started landing into the field. Then people started exploring the different uh, alternate energy sources. An example of uh, an uh, alternate source is electric vehicle is being shown in this uh, image. And the last one is the fifth one, the where we are exploring a different materials, a manufacturing processes in order to create a modern vehicles. So, from 1885 up to 2023, these are the slowly and gradually the automotive industry, it started evolving. Those were the time where people were not very serious about using the automobile engineering that can be used as a per personal conveyance. But those were the time where people considered the automobile engineering that can be used as the, I mean, for the amusement purposes. So with that mindset, automobile industry struggled and slowly and gradually it took around 137 years to present a vehicle which we see on board these days. So 137 years of long history. So we would be assuming that what has emerged during this time. So the first point is that the amusement image, the perception of an amusement was transformed into a personal conveyance image. And this was rather very challenging. Uh, during this time, the concept of open circuit and closed circuit motorsport racing concepts were evolved. Back in 19, 1895, the very first open circuit racing was introduced. And between the, the city, two different cities held in Paris. And uh, soon after the, uh, uh, you see, the, uh, the event got uh, uh, organized, it was realized that a lot many accidents happened. And uh, soon after that, the US government banned the open circuit racing and they refurbished the concept and introduced the concept of the closed circuit racing. And uh, the very first closed circuit racing is the Grand Prix. That is why the Grand Prix is very, very famous. So the closed circuit racing within the monitored environment, people started coming up with, uh, you see, uh, uh, using the vehicle for the amusement purposes so that within a monitored environment, people can, can uh, you see, experience the type of automobiles which were prevailing at that point in time. So the concept of the motorsports gave an idea that, that safety is important. And slowly and gradually, safety industry started evolving in. So the concept of the seat belts, concepts uh, like, uh, uh, you see, the superstructures, the game started evolving in that point in time. Then Ford revolutionized the market by con changing the uh, perception that vehicle can be owned personally as well. So they started producing uh, affordable vehicles. At this level, they have to work at organization level as well and as with the different features that they are offering in the vehicle as well. So uh, the very first production, the movable production line was being invented at this point in time. So earlier, the one vehicle was being able to manufacture in 12 and a half hours. But after the faster production line being invented by the Ford, one vehicle can be manufactured in just 99 minutes. 
So this was a breakthrough at that point in time back in 1920s where the fast production cars was there. And this initially the cost of owing a single vehicle was $2,000, which Ford continuously by producing a more mass produced cars, they reduced the cost to around $550. So you see an average of a person can also own this cars at that point in time. So people started then realizing that more and more designs uh, of uh, the vehicle should come into. So catchy and aerodynamic designs people started working upon. With more safety comes more responsibility on a material. So materials and more efficient manufacturing processes, they happen to come upon a ro more robust and durable vehicle platforms started working, coming in. Then people started exploring alternate energy sources that if not internal combustion engine, what could be the other sources of energies like batteries? People started exploring the ultra capacitors. People started exploring and few cells started exploring and producing energy out of waste, the biodegradable waste, non biodegradable waste, people started exploring in. And uh, slowly and gradually, more safety was loaded into the cars when the very first time the Macintosh was introduced back in 1980s. So you see, with the introduction of the Macintosh, uh, people started realizing that even electronics can be introduced in our vehicle. And all as these industries were evolving, government has a task to do because uh, those were the time where uh, India was fighting for independence, but the other countries like American countries and European countries, you see, they were uh, constantly evolving in these on these grounds that how to come up with different different uh, you see standards to make a uh, vehicle more and more affordable. So this is not an Indian scenario which I'm presenting over here. It's a total global scenario. Uh, this timeline which I've happened to show over here and. Uh, that is why we see that a lot of many standards in automobile engineering have been adopted from the America and European countries. So, but people, the India, in India, people started realizing that this is, there is a need of standards and emission norms which has to be pushed in. So, industry has a role to play. Different industries were going parallelly. And with the introduction of the Macintosh, industry thought of that it will completely revolutionize the market. So, you see that industry learned from mistakes. A lot of mistakes. Uh, one example, if I gave is uh, when the very first time the airbag was introduced, uh, the the very the concept of airbag was patented. People, the company thought of that it could be a revolutionizing idea which can make a uh, visualize individuals that even uh, a concept of airbag can come inside and can safeguard an individual uh, at a uh, you see high impact accidents. So they create they drafted an advertisement around. They created an advertisement where a vehicle is shown that vehicle is met with an accident and uh, an airbag can open and it can ultimately save the life of an individual. But this came, the, the psychology came in the opposite manner. The sales of a company drastically reduced because people started realizing that, okay, a vehicle can land into such heavy accidents as well. So you see, people don't like this concept that vehicle uh, meeting with an accident and ultimately this form of, uh, you see, uh, 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 see the uh, injuries can occur to an individual. So you see, industry learned from mistakes. That is why we don't see a lot of uh, you see advertisement promoting an airbag these days. Neither uh, after the 1975 when this form of advertisement landed into. So even industry it makes mistake. Uh, and uh, you see the industry uh, it evolved uh, slowly and gradually around the vertical. So it's not a single vertical we started evolving in. It's a multiple verticals which constantly start moving forward. So you see a lot of verticals, they are uh, constantly working in this field for developing a more affordable, reliable automobile vehicle for you, for us all. So you see, during this time, what do you think, what was required to evolve uh, uh, this uh, vehicle as we see today? Obviously a strong educational foundation which includes uh, maths, physics, which you probably would be studying right now, communications, of course, yes. And already, and all these skills you already have, don't you? But a lot, apart from these uh, required skills, you see, there are a few other skills which are required to build these real cars. And prominent one is the engineering knowledge. Engineering knowledge includes the mechanical engineering, electrical, engineering ethics. Engineering ethics includes that on standards, and what standards, the e even a single nut and bolt has been created in industry. So even the size of a single bolt has to be monitored and has to be made available for another 20 years because the life of a vehicle assumed to be around 20, 25 years. So the vehicle which you're purchasing in the year 2005, 
the parts of that vehicle has to be available, made available to by the company in the year 2025, 2030 as well. So standardization is a key. So people started realizing that we need to come with some standards and that is why engineering ethics landed into it. Then material science engineering, computer science engineering, and much more. So the vehicle manufacturing plant these days have the following departments. It's a long list. Uh, I happen to jot down a few prominent departments over here, starting with design and engineering, research and development. Design and engineering involves uh, for battery electric, hybrid electric vehicles as well. Engineering uh, includes that as well. Uh, research and development, production planning, purchasing, assembly department, quality control, manufacturing, welding department is there, paint shop department is there, power drain, electronics, testing, validation, maintenance department, environmental health and safety departments there, logistic department, human resource, IT and administration. So that is a long list. So what do you think? As an automotive engineer, what options from the list you think you have to get recruited or come up with some form of starter upon from the list has been shown over there. Anyone uh, to volunteer, please. As an automotive engineer, what do you think? What options from the list you have to get recruited in any of the departments as an automotive engineer? So fortunately, as an uh, automotive engineers, you have an option to get recruited in any of the departments. All the teams. This is the beauty of automotive engineers. Automotive engineer can get recruited in manufacturing engineering department, can get recruited in welding department, paint shop, power train, electronics. You see the design department, purchasing department, production planning, industrial engineering comes through here, then research and development, environment safety. So all these departments are for you, all the automotive engineers. So what I'm trying to make you visualize over here that the scope of automotive engineers is not limited, it's huge. The possibilities which an automotive engineer says is unmatchable to any other type of engineering department which happens to offer you all. So, as I mentioned, that industry kept on evolving uh, during this 137 years. So, and what I'm going to show you now is how the industry structure started building upon as the vehicle started crafting, right? So that we will be understanding that what type of industries they grow over the years so when when we analyze the industry arrangement we happen to see that most of the time industries are crafted around these three verticals be those industries which are working on improving the combustion technologies those industries which are working on improving the alternate fuels alternate fuels include batteries fuel cells ultra capacitors and so on be it could be ethanol production it could be hydrogen it could be cng so it, it could like, it includes like companies like I, I, IOCL, HPCL, BPCL, all the lubricating oil industries, hardware industries. See, it's included under this alternate fuel segment and uh, exhaust gas after treatment. Those industries which are working in creating a more, a better after treatment devices. After treatment devices means once the exhaust gases they come out of the internal combustion engine, uh, before emitting those gases directly into the atmosphere, you have to process those exhaust gases. Right. So, as you would have heard that there are you know, the emission norms which uh, India has to follow. In India, we happen to go with the BS norm, the Bharat stage norm, and currently prevailing in India throughout nation is BS6. So, the exhaust gas after treatment devices play a vital role over here. So, uh, these devices has to make sure that whatsoever pollutants are being emitted into the atmosphere, they are being completely as you see, neutralize without harming an, any single individual. And uh, the amount of gases which are coming out of the vehicles has to be regulated as well. They should not exceed, uh, uh, you see, per vehicle, some amount of emission gases per pollutant is being fixed out by the government. And uh, these exhaust gas after treatment devices, they make sure this. Example could be like catalytic converters are there, uh, diesel oxidation catalysts are there. Selective catalytic reduction is there. Then uh, you see the urea mechanisms are there. The ammonia uh, SCRs are there. So a long list is there when it comes to after, uh, exhaust gas after treatment devices. What I'm trying to say over here is that uh, industry around an automobile in industry is being crafted around these three primary verticals. So when companies started realizing, the, the government started realizing this, so what was the government role over? Government role is 
that once more and more designs of vehicles started rushing, there were conventionally there were only four wheelers. Then slowly and gradually two wheelers started pushing in. Then buses started pushing in. Vans are there. Then trucks are there. Lorries are with different loading capacities. So what government did? Government started categorizing these vehicles. So you would have seen on your driving licenses the different categories of a vehicle being mentioned over the L category vehicles, the M1 category vehicles, M2, M3 category vehicles, N1 category vehicles, N2, N3, and O category. So for L category, let us say it is government said that, okay, we'll be governing this thing uh, under a lightest vehicle category, be it a motorcycle. M1 category for passenger vehicle, M2, M3 for the buses. Now M2 and M3 has different loading capacities, right? So for example, M2 category up to three ton, beyond three ton up to five ton, it is classified as the M3 category. Then N1 category, the light duty trucks and N2 and T category heavy duty trucks up to 10 ton, 15 ton carrying capacity and O category for our trailers. Now, once this these categories started pushing in, government, uh, you see, over the time, slowing ready to monitor the amount of vehicles which are pushed onto the Indian roads, Indian government started creating a enterprises and organizations in order to monitor the amount of vehicles which are pushed onto roads, right? So with the passage in time, 137 years of long history, you please realize these long list of standards, organization, be it uh, for tractors, be it for components, be it for uh, uh, testing and validation, you see, be it for petroleum development, be it for crash testing, be it for vehicle certifications, a lot of industry started revolving in, evolving in. So please say, I have tried, uh, be it Ministry of Road Transport and Highways, the MOT, the Ministry of Heavy Industries and Public Enterprises, Ministry of Micro, Small, Medium Enterprises, ARAI, a famous, this is the place where a certification to a vehicle uh, is being given in the, uh, located in Pune, then Central Institute of Road Transport is there. ICAD, another mountain located in Manisar. There are two centers, Center 1 and Center 2. Uh, again, responsibility is for crash testing and, uh, uh, you see, for testing the vehicle for different certifications uh, before the vehicle is being launched in India. So a certification is required, right? So please realize that how the industry started revolving. In. First, there was no sign of vehicles. Slowly, different verticals like safeties, like materials started evolving in. And then the checks were put by the government that once the things are being fabricated, let us put a check over them. So for putting those checks, different, different organization standards started pushing in. And then this is how the automobile engineering started evolving over the years. So you see, Bureau of Indian Standards are there for uh, making sure that the type of method used for testing any individual component is right or wrong and so on and so forth. So uh, a simple advice over here is that you should keep on tracking these organizations for a possible inclusion in them. Uh, as an automotive engineer, you have a, you see, a strong uh, opportunity uh, of being recruited in these organizations. All these are directly and indirectly a government organization. So add these organizations in your bookmarks bar as well. So, this image over here uh, shows you that once the categories were evolved, how industry started crafting the regulation around each and every component of the vehicle. So what has been shown over here is around around 72 different types of uh, you see systems of a car, which are having different different types of you see tests being performed in order to make sure that the quality be manufactured by industry is okay or not, right? So there is a separate test for testing, let us say for a passive safety. Passive safety are those types of safety systems which come into play when the vehicle has met with an accident, okay? So once the vehicle has met with an accident, the passive safety systems make sure that the depth of injuries are to be least as possible so that an individual should not lead to death. So examples like safety belt for testing the performance of a safety belt, there is a separate standard for performance the for measuring the performance of a safety belt anchorage, right? Where the safety belt is being hinged. So you see that uh, standard is different. So similarly for internal fitting, safety glass, the steering impact, side door impact, different types of standards are there 
which a company has to perform before delivering a vehicle into the hands of a consumers. Right. Similarly, it goes with the lighting industry. We see the battery operated vehicles, the uh, active safety. Active safety systems are those systems which uh, prevent the accident to take place. Right. So there are a long list of different types of active safety systems which is being offered by a vehicle, and it uh, uh, you see employs a lot of electronic control units, the ECUs, and the different types of sensors technologies as well. So for testing, be it the wheel rims, be it the bumpers, be it the speedometers, on performance, for testing the performance of each and every system in car, there is a separate standard where the possibility of being inclusion of an automotive engineer is very, very high. So these are government initiatives. This means to get absorbed in the government institute as an automotive, auto, as an automotive engineer, the chances are very, very high. So, but what you learned in uh, 2023 uh, may not be required by 2024 because as I mentioned that uh, starting from the very first vehicle back in 1885 up to this point it took around 137 years but the rate at which the automobile industry is training these days is not considering 137 years. the rate is too fast these days so the amount of skills required to upgrade a vehicle which has been pushed in the year 2023 may you see those skills might not be required in the year 2024 a new sets of skills may be required since the introduction of the artificial intelligence and artificial intelligence it break down from the mechanical engineering automobile engineering because it's about data so what you learned in 2024 may not be required in 2025 so this is the current phase of innovation in the automobile engineering and this is significant this means industry is not going to stop for another 137 years to get transformed right those were the times where industry took a lot of time but with the introduction of more and more electronics uh, more and more uh, you see sensors more and more uh, you see the machine learning tools where as in human you are acting as a sensor to a vehicle that is where machine learning fits in right so constantly vehicle is monitoring that with what amount of force you are holding the steering wheel what is the force amount of force by which uh, you see you are pushing a clutch paddle what is the amount of force by which you are pushing a brake paddle and accelerating paddle so continuously you please realize the uh, the uh, components the ecus are treating you individual a driver uh, as a sensor it's taking an input so let us say for first 30 days you drive a car got the ecu is storing this data inside and uh, on the 31st day let us say your father drove a car the amount of pressure with which he is holding the steering would be different of what ECU learned in the past 30 days, right? So ECU would be taking an overriding, uh, you see, systems. They will take the steering system in the autopilot mode and, uh, you see, because ECU is detecting that the average force by which you are holding the steering vehicle previously was, let us say, for 10 newtons. And on the 30 first you are holding it with 20 newtons. So the variation, the deviation is too large, right? So an automatic pilot mode may be switched on and chances are there that these forms of active safety systems would be introduced as an anti theft mechanism being introduced in a car, right? So this form of machine learning is being introduced. So when we are getting, treating human as an in, uh, input sensors, start realizing that what amount of data uh, we would be getting in, right? So to learn this new form of data, you want new skills so that you generate new insights from this data and you are able to forecast a new, uh, you see, methodology around. This is the current pace. Uh, with this example, please realize that this is the current pace of innovation which are happening in the automobile engineering these days. So the modern working dimensions uh, which automobile industry is working around these days are these three. So there are first vertical in which people uh, coming up with the concept of electric hybrid electric vehicles where our industry is, uh, you see, in our ABC condition that where they, they should be going with an electric hybrid electric vehicle. At the same point in time, they have to push the uh, internal combustion engine based vehicles as well into the market, right? Yep, because government has not completely banned the IC engine. So a concept of modern vehicles are also there. And then comes the autonomous vehicle. And for manufacturing and autonomous vehicles, please realize concept of machine learning has to be understood, artificial intelligence, data analytics, and programming language. So you see, automobile engineering comes with a new definition. And automobile, under the automobile engineering, 
it's your liability as a student to learn what is machine learning, artificial intelligence, data analytics, and programming language. Learn about batteries, what is fuel cells, ultra capacitors. You have to learn alternate fuels, different possibilities by which a vehicle can be run, and different combustion technologies as well. Because in 1885, when the very first engine was introduced, invented, you see, that point in time, we were using pistons. Even in 2023, we were using pistons. So what, what has changed? Over that point in time, we were using crankshaft. And now in 2023, we are using crankshaft, right? So uh, realize that even though the hardware of the components, they have not, not changed, but over the years, you see, it's the optimization uh, uh, of the components be it in terms of material, be it in terms of designing, be it in terms of arrangement, it's evolved. And you as a student has to understand these intricacies of these systems. So you see, there is a long list. Some of you might be interested in batteries. Some of you might be interested in fuel cells. Some of you might be interested in ultra capacitors. Depending on your strength, pick one few and start exploring it. Right? Be it in the field of machine learning, artificial intelligence, data analytics, programming language. Often, Students approach me and ask me that, sir, as an automotive engineer, why should we be learning a programming language? But even when industry is not resisting this thing, why you as a student are resisting this thing? They have come, they are replacing uh, a lot of hardware with a programming uh, inside a vehicle. So it's the responsibility of an automotive engineer to learn this programming language. So a newer definition of the automobile engineer, right? And alternate fuels after treatment devices, combustion te technologies comes an add-on because you are an automobile engineer. So you see, that is why the companies like Cape Gemini, the Cognizant, they, they recruit the automobile engineering students. You see, because they want multi-diverse knowledge and uh, the you see clients of these companies, the Cape Gemini or the Cognizant, to name few, who are the clients of these companies? Ultimately, the clients of these companies are the vehicle OEMs. And vehicle OEMs, they came up with different, different projects, innovative products, right? Who require the automotive engineers, the type of domain knowledge which they come up with, because they have very strong knowledge of the vehicle background, which different branches of engineering don't have. So this is an edge of, uh, of having, of, of becoming an automobile engineer. But a simple add-on skills like data analytics and programming language, you have multi-diverse approach where you have a lot of possibilities to enter. Right. right. So you see, these are modern working dimensions in which com the country, the companies are working these days, the automobile companies are working these days. So what are the different skills required when we are talking about skills? Uh, though these are not limited to these uh, skills as I have jot down over here, but prominently, at least these are required. So as you gather more and more engineering knowledge, uh, your, uh, you see, uh, priority should be in learning at least these skills. So you should have some statistical analysis, uh, you see, skill, means uh, a data analytics, uh, you should be knowing. Uh, very fundamental thing to deal into, before dealing into microprocessors and ECUs and ECU tuning. Then programming language like SQL, Python, MATLAB scripts, R programming is what is required. Anyone can work. Uh, be you have get proficient in MATLAB, be you get proficient in Python, be you get proficient in R. Depends on an individual in which he is comfortable with. Then data vis data vis is data visualization. So once you have a lot of data, uh, companies uh, you see uh, they have to present. Uh, this data at two levels. First, uh, within an organization, because they have to come up with a more visual appealing graphics so that they can conclude more and more and they can get more and more insights in order to serve the customers in a better way. And second, the amount of information which is given to the driver, right? As you are driving the vehicle, you see there is an, the, uh, the communication system, the touch screen, which is there on which a lot of information is being presented to you, right? So how that information is being presented to you, that is visualization, right? So it has to be presented in a very simple language. So a data visualization tools like Tableau, Power BI, Looker, at least one of the softwares out of these three, you should be working on. Either you learn Tableau, either you learn Power BI, either you learn Looker. Then design and simulation softwares like Ansys, Hypermesh, not limited to these, 
right? But you should be uh, knowing these simulation softwares as well. How to do the CAD designing because most of you would be interested in design. Most of you would be interested in simulation of the vehicles. But please realize that at least one of the uh, software knowledge you should be having. A, a basic software like Word, Excel, and PowerPoint is a must. And a clear amount of manufacturing knowledge would be a uh, flavor, who put a flavor uh, uh, in you when you are being acting as an automotive engineer. So you see, with these must skills, or you should be possessing as an automotive engineer. So from the very first, you should have in clarity that what ultimately what where I have to go, right? So as we are moving forward in life, you should be knowing that if I have to become piece on to the points which I've just showed in the previous slides, what skills I should be possessing. So this is a pathway which you can uh, come up with, right? So a few examples of the uh, modern vehicle engineering uh, uh, that we introduced over here. So one example is we see autonomous vehicles. Autonomous vehicles, it's been divided into five different levels over here. We see uh, level zero, level one, level two, level three, four, and five. Level zero means those sets of vehicle in which there is no automation. Level one means a driver assistance is required in order to activate some form of systems. Without human intervention, the vehicle might not be able to, you see, activate some individual mechanism. Like uh, in modern vehicles, you would have get a knob in which you have to switch between the city driving mode, eco driving mode, and the sports driving mode. So a driver assistance is required, right? Where the driver is handling one task at a time, like automotive braking is there, concept of lane change, uh, assist mechanisms are there. So these are an example where level one autonomous, autonomous drivings are there. As we keep on moving forward up to level number five, you please realize they these sets of vehicles they operate entirely on their own without any driver presence, like automotive parking, like automotive driving, right? Automotive braking, overriding of the steering, overriding of the braking mechanism. These are level five categories. Right now in India, we are largely pushing into level two and maximum up to level three, right? So slowly, please realize industry has never thought of jumping directly from level zero to level five. This is what I want to make you realize over here because technology in an industry is always progressive in nature, right? So uh, technology has been slowly progressed. Industry does not grow at a very faster rate. And you please realize an example is being shown over here. So you see, autonomous vehicles, there are different levels. India is currently dealing in level two and level three, at least for now. So for making an uh, autonomous vehicles, uh, you see, uh, success, different data sorted devices, types of sensors, the acquisition systems, how to train uh, the machine with some sample amount of data, developing a neural networks uh, for a vehicle. These, these are going to be the pathways. These are the skills which you need to excel in as an automotive engineer, right? Another example is the uh, hybrid electric vehicle systems. So an image over here shows you that what are the different, uh, uh, you see, uh, levels of creating a hybrid electric vehicle. We start with the very first where Virtually, we are going to create a test rig inside a software. So a software knowledge where you can create a model of a vehicle and you can test it at different different states of a vehicle. States of a vehicle like your vehicle is running on some highway. Your vehicle is coming down in highway, right? Down a gradient. Your, uh, your vehicle is running at 50 kmph. Then you have to jump from 50 kmph to 100 kmph. Another change in state of a vehicle, right? At your vehicle was running at 100 kmp, then suddenly someone crosses in front of your vehicle. So you have to do a panic braking. During that panic braking, a vehicle has to decelerate from 100 to 0, let us say, within 5 seconds or 3 seconds. These are different states of a vehicle. And before creating a full fledged working model, industry came up with the virtual test simulations of these models. That is what is being termed as virtual test rig, right? So you create a virtual test rig in a software, you try to simulate it. Once the results you are getting is according to what has been desired, you please raise the models are being created and then we go with the component test rate where like braking system, like steering system, like individual dashboard mechanism, the different different components are being tested one by one, right? Similarly, there is a, a test rate for powertrain. Powertrain means 
let us say from engine to wheels, right? How the power is transmitted from a power source up to the wheel. So a powertrain test rig is there. Now, when it comes to component test rig and powertrain test rig, it is involving involving hardware. So usually when a hardware is involved during your testing, that is known as HIL in industry, the hardware in loop testing, right? So please realize the model testing is limited to only in the very first phase, right? And slowly and gradually when it you are moving forward into the production line of B of any vehicle, you will see more and more hardware interactions are there, be it component, be it powertrain, be it changes testing, or be it a road test, right? So you see, what I'm trying to show you over here is that it's not about gathering only the software's knowledge, whether you see, you should be knowing that how an entire vehicle is transmitted in person. You have to come up with a hands-on experience uh, for these purposes. So another example is over here has been shown is hybrid electric vehicle. So it involves component powertrain changes testing. Changes testing means uh, your vehicle is entirely ready. And uh, uh, as been shown in this image, we see a vehicle is there, uh, which is mounted on a changes uh, dynamometer. Changes dynamometer simulate the real life conditions, like what we are getting on roads. Uh, at the roads, the roads could be bumpy, Sometimes the road, uh, you see, uh, very often, very frequently, uh, we have to apply the brakes, right? So different, different situations are being given to the wheels on the chases dynamometer, right? Uh, a lot, good amount of torque has been applied. On some day it's raining, on some day there is a dry road, on sometimes the vehicle is running on a snowy road. So all these conditions has to be simulated inside a research lab on a standing vehicle. So when these conditions were given virtually, these are being termed as the changes testing. They're always included under the changes testing. And then once the vehicle crosses the, all these testing, uh, you see, uh, that the levels, ultimately the vehicle will land onto the last type of test, that is the road test. So a road test department, uh, or famously known as the field testing department in most of the industries we have these days. So a road test. So please realize that all this requires hands-on experience. Simply listening to a lecture and uh, getting some uh, online specialization wouldn't solve the purpose, right? So that is why the engineering fits in. That is why a lot of many students will come and ask me, sir, if we are doing a nine-month specialization course in uh, automobile engineering, will, will it will solve the purpose? So my answer is straight away no, because they have not visualized the type of components. They are, they are not having a hands-on experience. So the very first year, if they are landing into an industry, industry are very, you see, keen enough in identifying whether this student has worked on some, some of the machine or not. So my recommendation for such for students are know that you shouldn't be going with only online, online, online uh, specialization. Rather, you have, if you have get, you're getting an opportunity to get some hands-on experience in creating your own vehicle. So that would be, the best. Another example is uh, battery, battery electric vehicles uh, these days. So this is a cut section of a Nissan Leaf which I have shown over here. Uh, we see as uh, we look onto this image, uh, you see there are different modules which are being arranged. Can someone tell me what are these modules? Uh, they are mounted at different different uh, location, be it vertical as I am moving my cursor, please see. They're mounted in the horizontal fashion as well as I'm moving my cursor. What are these? Can someone tell me if, if you have uh, any idea? Someone. Uh, so uh, these are uh, the battery modules, right? Uh, because just like if you're coming up with a bigger engine, uh, uh, you see, similarly, in case of a battery pack, we come up with a larger number of cells but creating a single battery pack with let us say around 300 cells won't solve the purpose why because uh, at the time of uh, you see maintenance if you happen to open a battery pack chances are very very high because that battery pack since a single battery pack is made of large number of cells so the net voltage is very very high around 400 500 volts sometimes in vehicles so you see it may harm the person who, who is trying to repair a car right so companies, they came up with the concept of modular, uh, you see, batteries, where limited numbers of cells, they are being arranged together. 
and such individual modules are then be arranged inside a car as we shown in this picture. So again, how to decide with that, what should be the number of modules that has to be mounted in a car? If I'm arranging cells in each module, how I should arrange them, whether I should be connecting them in parallel or series, this, this cells connected in series, cells connected in parallel, this you would be learning in your class 10 physics. These are the application in uh, automobile where you will find out, right? Please try to relate with the real life conditions. But you need to decide now that if I am connecting the cells in series, whether the current will add up or voltage will add up, okay? So if company is limiting that, okay, you can't come up with more than 600 volt inside a uh, vehicle. So you have to do the permutations and combinations and you have to come out to your figure, sir, okay, I can come up with 300 cells or 200 cells depending on the type of cell uh, chemistries you're coming up with. Like for lithium ion batteries, one uh, cell can give you uh, roughly around 3.2, 3.5 volts, right? So 600 divided by three. So usually what is required around 200 cells will work. But when you're coming up with the lead acid batteries, each lead acid battery will will give an output voltage of around two volts, right? So 600 divided by two over there, you have to come up with 300 cells. So lead acid cells has to be used 300 in numbers. And for lithium ion batteries, we have to come up with around 200 in numbers. So a hundred cell difference is there and hundred cells can save a lot of space, right? In vehicle where, uh, and uh, it can reduce a lot of weight uh, as well. That is why lithium ion batteries, uh, you see, are more preferred when it comes to battery electric vehicles uh, rather than the lead acid batteries, which are being used in four wheelers operated with internal combustion in these ways. So you see, these dimensions of engineering you have to work in as an automotive engineer. So a brief uh, history is there. We started working in development of uh, these cells back in 1796, and up to 2023, please realize we came up with we came up with uh, you see the lithium ion cells, right? Please look onto this. So uh, this form of engineering is is required, and you as an automobile engineer uh, should be looking onto these intricacies as well. So how, what are the ways? So once we realize that there are different skills that needs to be worked upon, so what are different ways for achieving these skills? So as a passionate automotive engineer, we crave for hands-on experience and hands-on experience will come through only participation. Participation in what? Participation in competitions, professional as well as students, right? So I've tried to figure out uh, Sorted, sort different two categories that what are different types of uh, professional motorsports we have and a student motorsport competitions at university level we tend to organize. So uh, please realize we come up with international go-kart championship. You would have seen us mini go-karts in the malls, right? Uh, we being a small arena has been created a closed circuit where you can come up with uh, different, different types of, uh, you see, go-karts. So for a first year and second year uh, engineering students, we come up with the international go-kart championship so that the very first year and second year, they can create their own go-kart. Then uh, an FT cycle competition is there, Maruti Suzuki Supra competition is there, Baha competition is there, Formula Bharat competition is there, RCDC, the Rally Car Design Challenge competition is there. And they are being organized by different, different companies. Please see Mahindra is there, Maruti is involved, Polaris is in, involved. And LPU uh, has been participating constantly in all these motorsport competitions. So for a quick reference, uh, I've included uh, the website details of all these competitions uh, so that at your leisure time, uh, you can visit uh, these websites and take, have a look of your different types of vehicles which students have uh, prepared. So this image uh, shows uh, different types of vehicle being prepared by the School of Mechanical Engineering Department of Automobile Engineering students at LPU. Uh, the very first image, uh, all these vehicles are prepared by these students. Uh, the very first uh, vehicle image you're seeing is for an on-road vehicle, uh, the FT cycle uh, vehicle. It's uh, a vehicle which is uh, which has to be run by two different, uh, uh, you see, drivers. So uh, two different drivers will run this vehicle at the same point in time. The second image which we are seeing is an off-roading vehicle, like uh, uh, running on a mountain. The third vehicle which we are seeing is a on-road uh, vehicle like Supra, uh, uh, being uh, tested on a racetrack like Formula One uh, vehicles, which you happen to see. And the fourth one is for again the uh, uh, you see the off-roading competitions, like uh, if we have to 
uh, run on all terrain vehicles, right? Form of an all terrain vehicle, so be it any climate, be it any form of roads, these vehicles are good to go with. All, in all these projects are being done uh, by the students and constantly they have been participating in different competitions and representing LP. You see, towards electric as well, uh, we have different uh, competitions, be it, uh, you see, human powered vehicle competitions, be it related to manufacturing uh, innovation in two wheeler competitions, well tech e bike challenge are there. And uh, we, as an institute, we happen to participate in all these. So, to promote hands on experience uh, at LPU, we have a student club, uh, LPUSA India College Club. And uh, this club was established back in 2012. And currently, we have around 300 plus active members uh, in this club. And this club uh, is totally operated by the students. It's a student organization, uh, a driven uh, uh, club, which is open 24 cross 7, 365 days. And be it any point in time, if you're not free during the you see daytime due to engagement in the classes you can visit the labs uh, at your leisure time and you can work on these types of projects and uh, we've been continuously participating and we have a long history of you see winning these events as well so a few examples uh, as the paper cuts uh, newspaper cuttings have put forth with reference over here so just to give you a quick flavor about uh, what uh, type of uh, vehicles may look like, I have added one or two videos uh, in this presentation if you have to. So again, please look on to that on what type of road surface this vehicle has been driven through. So again, this is an uh, off-roading competition uh, which is running. So it's a practice session which is being held at LPU. So before jumping, participating directly in a competition, we don't take the vehicle directly. We practice a lot many times and uh, the facilities are being made available by the LPU uh, for, for testing these vehicles as well. So what are the key conclusions out of this presentation? So the journey to becoming an uh, automotive engineer requires continuous learning, right? So as you would have realized by now that uh, though the automotive engineering is 137 years old, but still a lot has to be done. And uh, if you are realizing that you have learned, uh, you know, uh, some intricacies, some basics about automobile engineering, and that is done, so it won't fulfill the purpose. As an automobile engineer, you have to be constant learner, right? So if you stop learning, you can't uh, take a credit of that you are an automobile engineer. So it requires continuous learning and you have to keep yourself updated all the time. And your educational foundation in automobile engineering will provide the tools you need to innovate and contribute to ever evolving field of automotive engineering. That is why you see edu educational foundation is, is a must and uh, online courses would not fulfill the purposes. So this requires a hands-on practice. And the reason only is that the wheels of progress in automobile is, is, has not stopped turning, right? Uh, this brings a lot of opportunities to pressure. We have a potential to become the architects of tomorrow vehicle. So stay a constant learner in automobile engineering. So buckle up for, for the world of automobile engineering as uh, automobile engineering awaits ingenuity and uh, determination. I hope to see you guys at NPU. So these are the credits from where I have taken the reference. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much uh, for this insightful presentation. And I think you've already told what students can get uh, when they come in here um, from the expert advice to all the um, experiments they can have and maybe have their own startup and, you know, join uh, in the companies or in factories. I mean, they, they would just excel their career. Just one question, sir, I would want to ask. Uh, let's say if somebody has um, done his 12th grade uh, from bio, uh, this section, right? Like have taken bio and have gone in bio as well in the graduation. For example, somebody has done his bio biotechnology. Right. Now wants to do in automobile engineering or, you know, just wants to change the whole thing. So would it be possible for them to change and to shift from bio to this particular section? Right. Uh... These forms of uh, questions often comes to me. Uh, when we've been participating in uh, such competitions, uh, we'll be, we are going with a mixed bag of students. It's not only about, uh, you see, automobile engineering students being participating. We always try for uh, supporting members from different domains of sciences as well. 
be right. it biosciences, be it bioengineering. One example I can uh, give over here is uh, uh, during uh, while while creating the seed for a vehicle, uh, I need to choose a leather uh, that how the the leather the seed material would be interacting with my body. Mm -hmm. So a lot many companies they conventionally would have seen that a lot of sweat during the summer times while sitting on a car for a longer duration in time. If you are driving a car for around two years, two hours, three hours continuously, a lot of sweat started coming in. So bioengineering student they fact come come into this uh, picture where they realize that what type of the material properties uh, should be uh, you see monitored as the materials is interacting with the uh, you see skin so uh, these types of engineering uh, problems we happen to face in automobile so we we always welcome the other domains of sciences as well to uh, you see participate in such competitions so the fields are open yes everything in automobile uh, even a psychology student can rush in. Another example is like for psychology, uh, uh, people's, uh, if I have to design a theme of a car, right? So a theme of a car could be a double tone theme, uh, could be a, uh, a single tone theme. And a psychology people, they they have a good amount of idea that uh, if I'm trying to launch a car for North India, if I'm trying to launch a car for South India, what type of theme is preferred by the, uh, you see, uh, consumer? So. Okay. The psychology people they con constantly contributing and guiding the company that uh, uh, you see what uh, uh, you see it uh, uh, how they can contribute in a vehicle uh, right. by giving some psychological inputs. A constant service are being done uh, by the administration yeah. in this line. I think, right, so I totally get it. Like all the diverse um, people from diverse backgrounds do come in to make this a particular, I mean, successful and. Uh, there's this one question that came from Jeff here. So it says, uh, okay, do we gonna get that certificate? So I'm very sorry to announce that for now, we do not uh, provide certificate to attend this webinar, but for sure, uh, we'll maybe, you know, I'll just ask uh, our uh, authorities here. And if you have any certificate or if you get any certificate for attending this session, you will definitely get on your email. And sir, with this, uh, now I will wanna take your permission to wrap this session up absolutely man absolutely thank you so much thank you sir thank you so much for coming in for crediting you. your time for all of us here and giving this informative session and at the end i also want to uh, say to everyone that this session will be uploaded on youtube as well so if you have missed any part of this you can watch on youtube and with this i uh, yeah. want to say thank you our participants also who have joined us or may who have maybe left uh in between the session you guys uh i mean you've joined us and the question you've given is really appreciated so with this i take your leave and meet you soon in the lpu physically if, if not then for sure in the next webinar until then stay safe and stay healthy thank, thank you, so you much. thank you so much